us some time to cultivate that plan and uh, put in some other safety measures, but that's also part of our safety and security programming right now. We're encouraging staff to, um, to look at uh, Homeland Security's video for Run, Hide, Fight to uh, provide uh, personal um, support to them in the, in the event of an emergency here at the library. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we're revising our emergency manual and procedures related to that. Um, other parts of the day included uh, um, our strategic plan initiative to support equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, ALA's Office of Diversity, Literacy, and Outreach Services provided a, a workshop on cultural competence. Um, all staff seem to think that this was a really great program and it just went by too quickly so that we're going to consider that our first phase and we're going to do a lot more programming about this going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, that relates to our strategic plan initiative to support equity, diversity, and inclusion. And then we closed out our day um, with uh, JJ's List. Uh, JJ's List is an organization that supports disability awareness. Um, they also kind of form like a, a Yelp-like review site to, um, to grade organizations and how well they support um, those who are living with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, Wilmette Library is, is well rated on there. We have 10 positive ratings and zero negative ratings. Mm -hmm. um, they have been out previously to do training, so this isn't the first time that we've worked with them and that training was reinforced. Um, we do have a chart that's up on uh, that bulletin board over there. You can see that kind of talks about ways that we can support those with disabilities, and staff is familiar with all those procedures. Um, so that, that kind of, I know it wasn't succinct, but I think that succinctly summarizes what we did on March 1st. Um, also in my report, um, I wanted to, to call attention to our Maker Fest. It was our inaugural oh, yes. event on April 23rd, or I'm sorry, May, uh, February 23rd. Mm -hmm. Um, we had over 400 people attend this event. It was a packed house. It, for, for those of you who attended, do you have any comments about this? Give me just a moment to take a breath here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, mean I, I was there, and I, I just, it was, I've, it's, there are different times of the year I've come into the library and seen just, like, the energy, like, just this huge amount of energy, and, mm -hmm. and this surpassed everything I've seen before. Um, and there are plenty of times I've been here where there's a, where, where, if it's like you know, uh, high school kids prepping for, for finals and things like that, where there's all this energy and, mm -hmm. and activity, and, and this was just a whole new level of it. And I was really impressed with how much, um, um, it really seemed to cater so much to every um, age demographic in, in that was here, whether yeah. it was kids or adults mm -hmm. or grandparents. I saw everybody finding things that they could be engaged with, and the people that were running the different maker events all seemed to be very, um, kind of, again, emulating what the library is all about in terms of being very uh, open and warm and friendly. Mm -hmm. And the library staff was, was amazing in terms of guiding people to different, to different locations. What I enjoyed about it was it reinforced the public library, WPL, as a place to get a taste of things because you involved all the businesses that had ancillary services yeah. where the uh, constituents could go and get more. Also, I was particularly impressed with the fiber arts group and how they had set up and all their demonstrations, because I never had a clue about what they did. But I mean, it was massive amount. And then the high school girl that did the dome. That she did the dome, yeah. <laughs> that you could go look up the sky, that was really. Yeah. In terms of you involved, everybody, I think, in the community, which was really good. It was a really inspiring event for us, and I really do feel that this is a, a, a model for um, the type of partnerships that the library wants to cultivate. Um, we've just formed a community engagement committee, and this is kind of a representation of the type of activities, I think, on a microcosmic level that we're trying to promote broadly. Mm -hmm. um, we had over 43 exhibitors that we partnered with um, to be a part of this event. Um, they all gave us positive feedback that it was good promotion for them. It was mm -hmm. great promotion That's for important. us. Right. Um, we had a survey for those who, who attended the event, and over 90% of those surveyed said that they would use a space at the library if it were dedicated for the purpose of, of a maker space. Um, we know that we've collected anecdotal evidence about that before, mm -hmm. um, but that was nice to get that reinforcement at that event, albeit a captive audience. Mm -hmm. um, and we had over, nearly half of those who attended that um, said that they had already attended um, maker programming here at the library. So we know that this is a type of thing that is already popular um, with, with our uh, patrons. So we're really excited about that. Um, we had an unsolicited front page feature about this event um, in the Wilmette Life, and we were really thrilled to see that. Mm -hmm. um, the Beacon also gave us positive coverage as well. So it, um, this definitely garnered a lot of attention, and, and we were thrilled about that. 
Um, the library also was represented at the Go Green Will Met Fair on March 10th. Mm -hmm. um, the adult services, new services staff were there, as well as the Friends of the Library also hosted a table. Um, that was a great event and again marks a, another uh, example of how the library is looking to promote more outreach, advocacy, community engagement, um, and just overall partnership with um, uh, other agencies in the community. Um, what else can I tell you here from my report? Do you have a number? Uh, I know you have a number of the people who came and taught the maker spaces, but how many people from the library worked on that to set it up? I mean, that's, that was a huge endeavor. It, it was a big endeavor. Um, I would say about a dozen staff members were were responsible for, for coordination of the Maker Fest. Um, but I want to give special credit to Janet Peel yeah. and Ruth Bell for their coordination of that event. Mm -hmm. I will say that anybody I talked to afterwards who had been there, I didn't have a chance to go, but there was an immediate big grin on their face. <laughs> and just what they did came right out. You know, it just was really a wonderful experience for people. Um, I guess the, the last bits of information that I would share with you is that, um, let's see, we are in the process of designing the wraps for our two new book drops. We're getting excited to um, commence the launch of our uh, drop box at the CTA Linden Station. Um, I don't have a date for that yet because I'm still waiting for a signed MOU contract from um, Chicago Transit Authority. Um, so we're, we're hoping to receive that here soon so that we can coordinate uh, the launch of that event. Um, uh, they do. We, we have a verbal um, agreement with them, but we, we don't have the official signature at this time. But um, the wraps are being designed and um, the delivery for those drops um, will, will arrive within just days of us placing the order. So we just haven't pulled the trigger on it yet because we want to make sure it is official. Mm -hmm. um, Anthony, can I, can I ask on that? Yes. Uh, about how long has the CTA been sitting on the MOU? So the board took their action um, to approve the MOU in January, and we've been in uh, January or February? January. Yeah. Um, and so we have been um, back and forth with them. They were looking for insurance forms from us. Um, we provided the insurance forms. Um, it's just been it's just been a little bit of a challenge trying to get that uh, to move through the uh, the legal channels there. So did we send them, can you tell me about how long it's been radio silence on their end? Um, I would say it's probably two to three weeks since the last correspondence that I've had with them. Okay, and from in your opinion, we've sort of done our work, we've given them everything that's reasonable, and now we're just waiting for them to sign it? The last correspondence I had with them, I asked, do you have everything that you need from the library? And they said yes. Um, okay, great. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I know that you've been instrumental in this, Dan. We really appreciate your partnership. Yeah, of course. Um, all right, so as I mentioned, the other the other drop is um, going to go to the uh, Community Recreation Center. We're going to replace the dented box at that location. So there will be two boxes that will be installed. And um, we've got a really pretty wrap that we're going to put around it this time. So that will be a little bit of branding and advocacy for the library and give it a little bit more promotion. Um, the last bit of information I would share with you is that we're getting excited next uh, Monday to welcome our new cataloging librarian. Um, she is coming to us from the Winnetka Library, and um, she's currently part-time there, and, and her position here will be full-time, and she'll have some, uh, some desk time on, on the reference desk as well, so she'll get a sense for um, just how her resources are being used when she's cataloging them. So um, we feel that this is a really great opportunity to do some uh, additional development within technical services and our public service department. Um, that, I guess, concludes my report, and I'm open to any questions that you may have. So she will be located where? Upstairs? In technical here. services, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, um, the next item of our agenda is, is the ILA. Um, any, Dan, any legislation we need to be aware of? Okay. No. Um, <laughs> Dan? Jan, um, I mean, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I was talking. I had a great monologue, but I was on mute. So uh, I said, is there any that. legislation that we need to be aware of? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot, but I will we'll really know in a week or so what bills get out of committee. So this is sort of the uh, the hot week, and next week's the real hot week to see what will live. But um, there there is a bill that uh, um, Representatives uh, McSweeney filed, which uh, calls on libraries with uh, uh, large um, you know funds to um, essentially start spending those down, but um, I don't anticipate that bill, which would likely affect us, will get out of the Revenue Committee in the next week. So good to be aware of it, but it's not likely to come up. Thank you. Um, then we have the ILA newsletters, which we've all received. So, uh, Jen, if you mm -hmm. could sure. be um, There are two real. conferences coming up. Okay. One, the big one is Reaching Forward 2019. Actually, not the big one. That's a smaller one. That's one day workshop. Uh, you need $150 by April 19th, and that's here. Um, I didn't write it down, so but it's somewhere close. Rosemont. That, Rosemont, right. And then the annual conference is October 22nd to 24th here again in the Tinley Park Convention Center. Mm -hmm. They are seeking proposals, and the uh, watchword is where, how, or the theme is where will you grow or how. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's not it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, I've got, um, at this point, and you probably saw it in the uh, ALA uh, magazine, that they're asking, your, asking you to ask your representative very soon to help fund the libraries. The White House budget proposal has proposed elimination of federal funding for libraries. And so it's important to contact your representatives and let them know that they really need to push for did the funding to go through. I know I got the email where you just push the button and did, did you send it out? Did, oh, uh, I get it from I did not send the advocacy alert, but, but okay. we can make sure that everyone gets a copy of that. Okay, okay that would be good. I got mm -hmm. it. Then, um, Let's see what else. There are a couple kind of fun things at this point. Um, in case you didn't know, libraries are now um, what's the word I want? Represented on the moon, and a thirty million thirty million page library is at this point on the twenty eighth of February is, is heading to the moon to help preserve human civilization. This, it took off from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, and it was uh, an Israeli uh, spacecraft. And they're just, the questions have come up about, well, if you have all these things on disk or whatever, you know, it's not books, obviously. Um, will there be uh, ways of accessing those things at the time if somebody decides they want to? Uh, we're talking about uh, book drops. There's a just a crazy book drop called the Book Bot that actually rolls itself along the streets and can be programmed. Don't ask me how, because it wasn't that explicit. But it can be programmed to visit particular houses and pick up books that need to go back to the library. So if somebody's very ill or they don't can't walk well or whatever, you know, this this bot will pull right up and, you know, it, it would be a difficult thing to do here in Lomet with the streets <laughs> and with the traffic, but, uh, you know, this was out in California, of course. And then uh, just something to think about maybe uh, for after the renovation, uh, we want people to be smiling and there have been um, tactics at different libraries to uh, enjoy a humorous moment when you walk in the library. One library has a big poster like this, and it says, dinosaurs didn't read, now they are extinct. <laughs> <laughs> and there's another a woman at one of the libraries uh, put a panda costume on uh -huh. and sat at her desk. And so when people walked in, <laughs> that's very cute. They saw the head of the panda, uh -huh. you know. So just, just moments of humor, and uh, something like that might help 
allay people's nervousness about right, what's I, going to be going on. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I guess um, information items, I guess the one that uh, I would particularly draw everyone's attention to is, of course, we're sort of in the middle of one book everybody reads. Mm -hmm. At least I hope you've all read your book. Her programming uh, and the kicks programming off in April. Print. Yep, programming mm -hmm. kicks off in April. Right. So um, uh, that's the only one. Uh, comments were circulated. I have one question about Lake on Fire, the, mm -hmm. the book that's going to be the one book everybody reads. Um, last year, I know, because the author was so popular, right. and we had to, there were, you had to get we tickets and RSVP. Is this one just going to be kind of a first come, first serve kind of um uh, for the, for the I don't know. Um, I know it's at the Wilma Junior High. Mm -hmm. I think that I, I, the only thing I could say is I'm sure the library is mindful of the issue of last year and is taking into account the anticipated uh, attendance, and I don't anticipate there will be an issue again this year. I think that's something that everybody would want to avoid having happened again. So, but but right. So, the, but you don't know if there'll be tickets or not. So I was asked. I was asked by a few people I mean, in my neighborhood. I, 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 I think it's going to be okay. So. I don't believe that we're doing tickets. Okay. I can confirm that for you and let you know. Okay. I, I don't believe that. We're